morning. Praise the Lord, dear viewer. It's a beautiful morning that the Lord has given us. This is the day that the Lord has made. And I believe this is the day of your blessing. This is the day of your promotion in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. This is the day of your healing because this is the day of the Lord. Uh, from wherever you are watching me from, this is Command Your Morning. And I know these programs have been a blessing to you. And I know even today, you are going to be blessed in Jesus' name. I am Pastor Steve Mbatia, and I am coming to you from KTN Home. God bless you. This morning, I will be speaking about a prayer that prevails. Uh, because prayer is a topic that the Lord has really laid in my heart in these times. Because I have come to understand that prayer is the backbone of our faith. It is the backbone of our Christianity. It is the power, it is the driving force for a Christian. And uh, today we'll be speaking about prayer that prevails. I know many of us pray, and, uh, but uh, many times probably you feel like you don't get the answers because maybe you don't pray in the right way. So I will be speaking about prayer that prevails. And I will be speaking from the book of uh, James, uh, chapter 5, verses 16 to 17. And uh, if you have your Bible, you can just go with me. And uh, I know we shall be blessed in Jesus' name. The Bible says, Confess your faults one to another, and pray one for another, that you may be healed. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Verse 17, Elijah was a man subject to like passions as we are. And he prayed earnestly that it might not rain, and it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months. Praise the name of the living God. Now, we are seeing a man called Elijah who prayed that it might not rain for three and a half years. <laughs> and it did not rain. And... Uh, the Bible says he prayed again that it may rain. And the Bible says he, it rained. But there, there, there are some things I've really borrowed from this scripture this morning. Uh, that Elijah was a man just like us. That is to say, Elijah was not an angel. Elijah was not a superman or a batman. You know, when we were children, we used to see these supermen. Elijah was a man like us. The Bible says he was subject to like passions, to like emotions, just as we are. But the Bible says this man prayed earnestly that it may not rain, and it did not rain for a span of three and a half years. Now, I know you have prayed for so many things and they don't happen. I know you've even prayed for a headache to go away and it didn't go away. I know there's somebody watching me and they are saying, Pastor, I've prayed to get a job, but I have not gotten it. I have prayed for my husband who is drunk. But every time I pray, it seems he's continuing to pray. I'm saying, help is on your way. Because we have a God who answers our prayers. I love a song that has been just recently produced, that we have a God in heaven who hears our prayers. And I want to say there is a God in heaven who hears your prayers. But you have to pray the right way. That's why I'm speaking about the prayer that prevails. What is that prayer that prevails? Number one, it is the prayer of a righteous man. The Bible says in verse 17 of James chapter 5, that the prayer of a, the effectual prayer of a righteous man availed much. And I want to take you to the book of John this morning. Verses 9, uh, chapter 9, verses 31. The Bible says, We know that God heareth not sinners. And you are just listening to me, and probably you just seen the last night. I have good news for you that we have a Savior called Jesus Christ. And through his death on our cross, he became sin that we may be the righteousness of God. So the righteousness I'm speaking about is not the righteousness out of our works. It is the righteousness based on our faith in God. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5.21, He who knew no sin became sin, that you may be the righteousness of God. So what is that prayer that prevails? It is the prayer of a righteous man. 
How do we get righteous? It is by believing on the only begotten Son of God. It is by resting our faith in Him. Praise the name of the living God. Hallelujah. So, the prayer that prevails, number one, is prayer of a righteous man. And you are asking, how can I be made right with God, preacher? And I am saying this morning, you can be made right with God through believing in the only begotten Son of God. The Bible says in John chapter 1, verses 11, that he came to his own, but his own disowned him. And verses 12, the Bible says, but as many as believed on him, he gave them the right, the power, the privilege to be called the children and the sons of God. I am saying this morning you can't be made right with God. I am saying before you go to your workplace, it doesn't matter how much you have sinned, you can't be made right with God. Because God heareth not the prayer of sinners, but he hears the prayer of a righteous man. And the only way to be made right with God, it is not writing a wrong, di- a- a wrong objectives on your diary on what you are going to implement. No, it is by resting your faith in him. The Bible says Abraham was not made righteous by the merits of his work, but by his faith in God. Praise the name of the living God. And this, man, and this morning you can become that man, that woman, that young lad who God can hear his prayers by being made right with him through his son Jesus Christ. So God hears the prayer of a righteous man. Because when God makes a man right with him, he, 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 there, there is a fellowship that we are bathed into with him. A father to son relationship. And that's why the Bible says, as many as believed on him, he gave them the right, he gave them the power, he gave them the privilege to be called the sons of God. If there is a confidence I have this morning, it is not that I am preaching to you. It is that I am a child of God. It is that I am a son of God. It is, by, it is that by the, the death of our Lord Jesus Christ on that cross, I was made right with him. By the washing of his blood, I have been forgiven. And I can say I am a new creation. No wonder 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says that if any man be in Christ, if any man... Be in Christ. He is a new creation. Behold, look, see, the old is gone and all things have become new. That is to say the sin you did yesterday is no longer remembered. You are now a new creation if you believe and rest your faith in the only Son of God, Jesus Christ. And thus you become a righteous man. A man whose prayer God can hearken to. So number one, the prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Number two, honest prayer. That is diligent prayer. I'm talking about prayer that prevails. It is honest prayer. I know we are in the microwave generation where people want something at pop and it just happens. People want to get rich quick. That's why they are passing through shortcuts. But the Bible says that the earnest prayer of a righteous man, the diligent prayer of a righteous man. I love the scripture in the book of Hebrews 11, 6, that says that God is a reward of they that diligently seek him. Prayer is not just done. Prayer is earnestly done. Prayer is diligently done. Let me tell you how Elijah did his prayer. This is my homework for you. As you go to your workplace this morning, the Bible says in the book of uh, in the book of First Kings chapter seven chapter eighteen from verses forty two to forty six that Elijah put his head between his knees and he cried unto the Lord that it may rain, and the Bible says he kept sending his his servant to look by the side of the sea, and seven times. The servant kept coming and coming and coming. And Elijah would ask, have you seen anything? And the servant would say, I I have seen nothing. And when the servant came back the seventh time, he said, I can see a cloud the size of a feast of a man. And Elijah told him, go to King Ahab and tell him to start journeying back to the palace. Lest the rain meets him on the way and he gets stranded. That is to say, Elijah prayed earnestly. 
He did not just go to the place of prayer. He prayed until something happened. And I have seen an abbreviation push. Pray until something happens. That is what we call honest prayer. And this morning, as you are in this devotion, this is my prayer. Get to a place where you will kneel and pray until something is bathed in your spirit, until you can feel the Lord, until you can feel that fellowship, until you can feel that peace. You may be troubled because the economy is not going your side. You can be troubled because your business, your business is not making profit. You can be troubled because you have not paid rent. You can be troubled because you don't know what is happening with your husband. I am calling you to a place of honest prayer where you will stay in the prayer place until you feel the Lord has done something until you feel a, a certain peace until you feel a certain burden of loaded of your chest and of your shoulders Elijah prayed until there was a sign in the sky he didn't see a big thing he saw a cloud the size of a fist of a man and he told the servant that this is the sign of abundance of rain therefore tell Ahab that you may run that he may run, lest he is stranded by the rain. Elijah did not just pray. He prayed honestly. I know you are saying that the Lord doesn't answer your prayer. Have you prayed honestly? This morning the Lord is calling you to a place of diligent prayer. What happens in honest prayer? There are things that the Lord wants to crush in you. There are appetites that the Lord wants to break from within you. There is a furrow ground within your heart. And that's why sometimes the Lord will tarry with us. Because the Lord so longs for our fellowship. The Bible says precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of the saints. Precious. That the Lord is happy when the saints die. Why? Because he knows now that the saint has died, I am eternally going to fellowship with him in heaven forever and ever. There shall be no TV to distract them. There shall be no job to distract them. I will be with them here and fellowship with them forever. So the Lord will take long with you in answering your prayer because he wants you to have honest prayer. Why will God take, take, take some while before answering Elijah? Why would he take him seven times sending the, center, uh, sending the servant to and fro? Because God treasures those moments when we pray because prayer is fellowship with God. Has the Lord tarried with you? He is calling you to a place of earnest prayer. I am speaking this way so that you may not give up. Continue praying and don't give up. Pray until something happens. Pray until your husband gets born again. Pray until you get that job. Don't give up. Don't stop. At, don't stop speaking. Keep declaring it. The Bible says you shall declare a thing and it shall be established. Keep declaring it until it is established. The Bible says in the book of Romans chapter 10 verses 7 and 8. That this is the faith that we have, therefore we speak. Therefore keep speaking what you have believed. You believe God for that job. You believe God for that car. You believe God for the salvation of your husband. You believe God for the restoration of your family. Keep speaking it. Keep declaring it in prayer. It will manifest. Don't stop. Keep speaking it. Prayer that prevails, number three. It is prayer that is prayed in God's will. That is prayer prayed according to God's word. Now, God's will is his constitution. His word is his constitution. God is bound by his word. The Bible says he has exalted his word above all his names. Prayer is not prayer until it is prayed according to God's word. Until it is pay, prayed according to the will of God. I have met people who tell me, Pastor, you know what? I have been praying and I ask them, how have you been praying? And one person told me, I've been praying for the death of my neighbor. Because one time, he took a snake and threw it to my compound. And I thought, they are bewitching me. Now, that is not prayer in God's will. Because God's will is that you may pray for your enemies. God's will is not that you may destroy your enemies. No. You know, I've heard people say that somebody will be sacked for a job and then you will have an entrance. That is not God's will. God is not a duplicator. He's a creator. If you need a job, somebody don't have to be sacked. God will create a way for you. So you don't have to pray that God, let somebody be sacked so that I may have a place. That is not prayer in God's will. Because God is not a witch. 
God does not bewitch people. God is a blesser. Praise the name of the living God. Hallelujah. So have you been praying according to God's will? 1 John chapter 5, verses 14 and 15. I love this scripture. The Bible says this is the confidence that we have. That if we pray according to the will of God, we know that he hears us. So God does not just hear our prayers. He hears if we pray according to his will. That's why if we go to the book of Hebrews chapter 5, verse 7, the Bible says Jesus Christ during the days of his flesh here on earth, he, 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 he prayed with loud cries, petitioning unto the Father. What is a petition? I'm not good in terms of law and justice. But I can tell you this. This is what a petition is. You go with the constitution. A lawyer will go before the judge and say that you know what? The person I'm representing according to section 2A of our constitution is innocent. That is to say they will not just say that my client is innocent. It is according to this book, according to the constitution. So how do we approach God? It is in prayer according to his will. And what is his will? His counsel, his word. His counsel is hidden in his word. So prayer is not prayer until it is prayed in God's will. And this morning I'm challenging you to become a Bible scholar. God, uh, uh, Moses told Joshua in Joshua 1 verses 8, that do not let the words of this book of the Lord depart from your mouth. Meditate on them day and night and you shall be successful and prosperous in all your ways. Meditating on the scripture, feeding on the scripture, praying by the scripture will make you prosperous, will make you successful in the name of Jesus. Don't leave that house until you have meditated on the word of the Lord. Don't leave that house until you have prayed according to God's word in Jesus' mighty name. So how do you pray? You pray like this. Father, in Jesus' name, the Bible says that you shall supply my needs according to your riches in glory. So you don't just tell God to meet your needs. You tell him according to your word. You say, you shall supply all my needs according to your riches in glory. When God hears, his, he hears your prayer according to his word, he answers. That is what 1 John 5, 14 is saying. That we, this is the confidence that we have. If we pray according to his will, he hears us. And if he hears, he hears us, he does according to our petitions in Jesus' name. Number four, as I conclude. Prayer. In Jesus, in the name of Jesus. What is the prayer that prevails? It is prayer that is prayed in the name of Jesus. Go with me kindly and read with me the book of John, chapter 14, and uh, verses 12. This is what the Bible says, John 14, 12. I believe your prayer life is changing in Jesus' mighty name. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall do also. And greater works than this shall he do, because I go unto my Father. And whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in, my, in the Son. Verses 14. If you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. We don't just pray according to the anointing that is upon Pastor Steve or according to your bishop. No. We pray in the name of Jesus. The Bible says, anything you ask according to my name, anything you ask in my name, that I will do it. Praise the name of the living God. So what is the prayer that God answers to? It is prayer that is prayed in the name of Jesus. And I want to say that the Bible says in Acts chapter 4 verses 12. That there is no other name given unto men that they should be saved. But the name of Jesus. And the Bible says that whoever calls upon this name shall not be put to shame. May you pray in the name of Jesus. The Bible says, at the mention of this name, every knee shall bow. At the mention of this name this morning, cancer shall bow. At the mention of this name, barrenness bows in the name of Jesus. At the mention of the name of Jesus, poverty bows in the name of Jesus. At the mention of the name of Jesus, may every unemployment and disfavor bow in the name of Jesus. I declare a breakthrough. Upon your life in Jesus' name. When you pray in the name of Jesus, you have a direct access unto the Lord in the name of Jesus Christ. Number five, prayer in the Spirit. Romans chapter 8, verses 26 to 27. The Bible says that we don't know how to pray as we ought, but the Spirit Himself interceded for us according to the will of the Father. 
Now when we pray, we may become accusers. You may accuse your neighbor because of what they did to you. You may accuse your neighbor because when they were washing their house, probably some water got spilled to your, to, 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 to your, to your doorstep. And you may go accusing them before God. But that is not the will of God. The will of God is that you may love your neighbor as you love yourself. And therefore the Bible says that we don't know how to pray as we ought, but the Spirit himself interceded for us. Now the Holy Spirit is the intercessor. He intercedes for us according to the will of God. Not according to our will, but according to the will of God. Praise the name of the living God. Hallelujah. So when we pray in the Spirit, the Bible says in Ephesians 6, 18, that pray all manner of prayers in the Spirit. When we pray in the Spirit, we don't just pray. We pray according to the perfect will of God. You know there is a good will of God, there is a pleasing will of God, and there is a perfect will of God. When we pray in our understanding, we may pray according to the good will of God. But when we pray in the Spirit, it is the Spirit himself. The Bible says nobody knows a man rather than the Spirit that is within that man. We pray according to God's perfect will. That's why we'll challenge you this morning in the name of Jesus. That you may start praying in the Spirit. May the Lord fill you with the Holy Spirit. May the Lord fill you with the Holy Ghost. That when you pray, the Bible says that you pray with groans that are so hard for words to utter. Reka bakata, ibrakata. The Bible says in the book of 1 Corinthians 14, verses 2, he, verses 4, He who prays in a known tongue eh, does not speak unto men but unto God. For he speaks miseries. How be it that he speaks miseries? Rekabakatayada. I remember one time I'm traveling to Nyandarua County and I'm going to preach there. And there are devil worshippers who have said that this preacher will not get there alive. And we get to Kemende and it is foggy. And as I am traveling... I feel the Spirit put something within me. And I started speaking in tongues. Rekabakatata. And the vehicle lost control and then gained control. And when I arrived to my destination, we are doing some mission. There was a devil worship and that devil worshiper testified and said that I had been assigned to kill this man on his way to this place. But we could not because we don't know what happened. When you pray in the Spirit, you may not know what you are praying. But let me tell you, brethren, the Bible says in Romans 8.26 that we pray according to the will of the Father with groans that are so hard for words to utter. May the Lord fill you with the Holy Spirit this morning. As you set out to work, don't just leave the house. Don't just bathe and, and, and put on your favorite cologne and your favorite dress to work and your favorite suit. No, 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 no. Don't leave the house until you have prayed in the Spirit. Because the Bible says in Jude 20, that pray in the Spirit, building yourself up in your most holy faith. I want to pray with you, dear viewer, that the Lord may help you pray in the best way. So that your prayer may prevail. Because in heaven there is no dustbin for our prayers. We have a God who answers back our prayers. In the name of Jesus. And therefore wherever you are you can just stand up if you can. And you can pray with me. In the name of Jesus. Father in Jesus name. I pray for the viewer this morning. Lord I know they have prayed for many days. And they feel discouraged. But Lord, I pray this morning that you shall encourage them. And even as we have learned to pray in the right way, the Lord, you shall enlighten them to pray in the Spirit. You shall enlighten them to pray in the name of Jesus. The name that is above every other name. The name at whose mention every knee shall bow. In the name of Jesus, and therefore right now as I pray, in the name of Jesus, I command every bond of prayerlessness to break. In the name of Jesus, Father, I command a prayerlessness to bow. In the name of Jesus, I command every cancer, I command every disease right now to be broken in the name of Jesus. The Bible says that the mention of this name, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord. I command every bondage of poverty and generational curses right now. Be broken in the name of Jesus. Every bondage of disfavor. I command you to lose uh, this woman, lose this man. In the name of Jesus, I declare favor in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, you said whatever we pray. 
In your name you shall do it. In the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray for this one who is waiting for a job. I pray in the name of Jesus that their destiny connectors may meet them. In the name of Jesus, I pray for this who is watching me on a sick bed. I declare right now, rise up and walk in the name of Jesus. Rebabo shakadabaga. Rebabo setalaba. As you go to work, I declare favor. As you go to your business, favor. Favor with your boss. Favor with your clients. Favor with your interviewers. In the name of Jesus. Father, we declare that this is our day of blessing. We declare that this is the day we, you have made and we shall be glad in it. We declare that this is our day of testimony. In the name of Jesus. That jubilation shall be heard in our tent. In the name of Jesus. Father, I pray for that who is believing you to be filled with the Holy Spirit. I declare right now the power of God arrests you in your house right now. In the name of Jesus, receive the power of God. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray and we give thanks. Amen. I want to pray with you, dear viewer. I know that there is something God has done for you. Do what you could not do if you are sick in body. The Lord has healed you because he's right where you are. If you're not born again, just say this after me. So uh, just say the prayer of salvation after me, and the Lord is going to come to your heart in Jesus' name. Say after me, Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. I have sinned against you, and today I repent of all my sins. Forgive me, wash me with your blood, and write my name in the Lamb's book of life. I am born again, I belong to Jesus. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. If you say that prayer, you are born again, look for a good Bible-based church near where you are. You can also communicate to me or to us through my ministry, uh, or through the number that is just below your screen. Until we see each other next time, may the Lord bless you, do you good, and make your prayer life a prevalent prayer life. In Jesus' name, shalom, shalom. Amen.